Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today I'm going to do a double bill of sweets, desserts, oh yes. I'm going to make creme brulee and Eaton Mess. The Eaton Mess was requested by Mike P and nobody wants the creme brulee, except I bet you do, you just didn't realise. Um, and in fact I didn't realise until Oh, what was it? Valentine's Day. We got um, one of these sort of ready, ready-made meal deal things from uh, the supermarket, and we got creme brulees as the puddings, and they're absolutely de oh, amazing. And I, I know they're amazing because I've had them before, but I just forgot. Um, so dead easy to make, and I'll do that first. Now the reason I'm doing two desserts is that. They're both dead easy and they'll only take, if I did each one as a separate video, it would be about three minutes long. To be brutally honest, three minute videos don't do it for me and my channel. Um, YouTube likes videos that are at least eight minutes long and longer if possible, so that's what I'm doing. If you want short little videos, there's Taste Made and people like that do a lovely job. Anyway, um, I'm waffling. That's what I do. That's why my videos are so long and entertaining. Anyway, I am waffling. If you enjoy this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, etc. And without further ado, waffle, let's get on with it. But before we get on with it, let me just say, when you make creme brulee, you use egg yolks, and that means you have egg whites left over. And, you know, just about the best way to use up egg whites is to make meringue, and Eaton Mess contains meringue. So it meshes together and you don't waste bits of egg. Okay, let's do it. Right, creme brulee. In French it just means burnt cream. All it is, it's a set custard with a layer of demerara sugar on top, which is then caramelised under a grill or using a blowtorch. And it is marvellous. And the great thing about it is the custard, you make in advance and you let it go cool, and then you finish it off at the table or just before by doing the sugar thing. 300 ml of double cream, heavy cream, 15 grams of caster sugar, powdered sugar, three eggs and a sploosh of vanilla or a scraping of a vanilla pod if you're extremely wealthy or you know just something vanilla flavoured. So first thing to do is separate the eggs, ah not three eggs, three egg yolks so we need to separate the eggs. Now because we're going to be making meringue with the egg whites we want to be absolutely sure there's no egg yolk in with them. So we use a three bowl technique to separate the eggs. And the egg white goes into that temporary holding bowl. The yolk goes into there. And then the egg white goes into the permanent holding bowl because we didn't get any yolk in it. So, try another one. Lovely. There we go. Now you want to heat your oven to 130 degrees Celsius for a fan oven, convection oven. That's 150 for a normal one, and that is gas two. So it's very, very cool. And then get yourself some ramekins. These aren't ramekins, these are actually the glass dishes that the creme brulees came in that I bought previously. And they're brilliant because they're wider and shallower than a ramekin, so you get more sugar crunch to egg custard. Oh yes. So get a big roasting dish, your two dishes. I might actually have enough to do three, we'll see. I put some hot water in. This is not boiling, but it's, it's just to kind of pre-warm pre the dishes. So water just over halfway up and then we'll pop that in the oven. Now get a heat proof bowl which conveniently you've got your egg yolks in and the sugar and just whiz them together. Now put the cream in a saucepan. This is very thick. Oh, I bought extra thick cream 
which I shouldn't have done so I think maybe I'll dilute it with a little bit of milk because this is going to be so <laughs> insanely actually almost unpleasantly creamy and we'll put that on the heat and bring it to the boil oh, actually add your sploosh of vanilla and we pour the cream onto the oats mix them together then pour it into your dishes I think I can do another one now I'll pop these in the oven for about 30 minutes and then see how we're doing All right, it's actually had 33 minutes, so let's see what we've got. Uh. Oh yeah. They look um, pretty good. There uh, shouldn't actually be any colour on the top, but there is. <laughs> Yeah, they're fine. So we need to let those cool down and that can be overnight if you like. As I said, there's a sugar thing to go on top, but you can't do that until they are cool. Okay, I'm gonna make the meringues. So first of all, I want the three egg whites in the bowl. And I've got 150 grams of caster sugar that we'll add later on. But first we need to whiz the egg whites to like soft peaks. Now I'm going to add the sugar a spoon at a time and wait for each spoon to be completely mixed in before you add the next one. And you'll end up with stiff peaks, white and glossy. Okay, we are there. So I've got bacon sheet lined with greaseproof paper and I've got the oven preheating as before to 130, 152 and uh, I just spoon blobs of the meringue onto paper, not bothering with anything fancy or decorative because it just gets smashed to bits in the eaten mess anyway. So they go in the oven for one hour. And at the end of that one hour, we'll just turn the oven off, maybe open the door a little bit, but not necessarily. You just want them to cool down really slowly. And in this case, it's gonna be overnight because we're really not gonna taste test two desserts in one evening, I promise you. Okay, I'm gonna finish off the uh, creme brulees. So, teaspoon-ish of demerara sugar. Spread out evenly. And you can stick those under a grill or a broiler, or get your blowtorch out. Oh yeah. Look at those lovely bubbles of caramel, fantastic. And now it's taste test time with uh, Mrs. Keith. Hurts. We know. As our, <laughs> it, turns out it is our 96th wedding anniversary today. 36. So, yeah. <laughs> So, just feels like happy anniversary, yeah. my love. <laughs> I've made you a crunchy pud. Ooh, ah. Uh, Oops. <laughs> Did you hit the glass or the slate? No. Uh -huh. oh. Mm. Oh. <laughs> you know this works because mm -hmm. Keith made it the other night when we had some friends round. Mmm. -hmm. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. 
This is lighter. Yes. Mm, I like it. Yeah, the one I made the other day was, um, mm. it was too thick. Um, <laughs> so that's why I put a bit, bit of milk in it. Mm, no. Mm. Honestly, that is so delicious and it's so easy to make, mm. as you know. So get on it. Hmm. Yeah. And tomorrow mm. there will be eaten mess. Ooh. Ah yes. Because <laughs> where is that? It's going yes, to be. They go together. Extra eggs. <laughs> yeah. So tomorrow <laughs> I'm going to finish off the eaten mess and we'll have another taste test. <laughs> Try <Tra> for now. Bye. <laughs> Alright, it's the next day and we're going to make the Eaton Mess. So if you don't know what this is, it's a very simple dessert. It's just whipped cream and summer fruits like raspberries and crushed meringue chucked into it. It's named after Eton College, the posh boy school near Windsor where Prime Ministers are forged in the white heat of knowledge, um, I suppose, something like that. And, and it's just absolutely wonderful. There is no skill involved in making it whatsoever. I'm doing a version that's slightly healthier than the cream-based one. I'm using yogurt instead of cream, so I don't need to whip that. I'll just, I can just use it as is. These are the meringues that I made yesterday. Wonderful. And my strawberries are actually raspberries and some leftover cherries. And you can actually use any combination of little berry type fruit that takes your fancy. First thing to do is chop the fruit up and macerate it in some sugar, caster sugar. So I've saved some whole cherries and um, just <laughs> actually ripped them to bits because they're, they're a little bit, well, somewhat overripe. I'm not going to do that to the raspberries. So the term macerate, it's, it's just like marinade uh, except for fruit. And the reason you do it is it just sort of gets the, gets the juices running and also sweetens any fruit that's not massively sweet already. So I'm also going to save some whole raspberries to chuck on the top. So I'll just sprinkle some sugar onto the fruit and leave it for about half an hour. Now I'll just add some yogurt, probably about half of this pot. I mix it all together and it's perfectly okay to squash the fruit a bit while you're doing it. Actually I've seen some recipes where they stick it through a blender to make it really smooth but uh, I'm not doing that. And now we can add some smashed up bits of meringue. You can't go wrong really can you? <laughs> and to serve it just put some on a plate, smash up some more meringue around it and the reserved fruit on top and then get stuck in. And now it's taste test time with Mrs. Keith Cook. <laughs> We've just come home trudging through the snow on this day, the 30th of March. <laughs> well, it's still falling. There was nothing to trudge through, but uh... I'm glad to be in out of it. Oh, hi. There you go. You've made a mess. I have. <laughs> so did you say you were going to make it with yoghurt rather than cream? I made it with yoghurt. Mm -hmm. And um, also I recommend avoiding those cherries, they're not nice. Mm. Yeah, you did say you weren't impressed. I had one the other day. No, I actually had two. One was actually nice and a bit bland. But the other one was, yeah. Anyway. Oh, this works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I haven't even started on the meringue. Meringue's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I actually left it in from about <clears throat> what, four o'clock yesterday. Oh, you weren't here. Um, and didn't open the oven at all, just turned it off after an hour and opened them at about four o'clock today. So they've developed some serious chew mm. in the middle, but a nice splat. Soft and crisp on the outside. Front on the outside. Mm. Like they're supposed to be. Yeah. It's 
So, yeah, we're doing mm. that thing again. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, baby. Mm. Okay, then. Oh, Very good. <laughs> Second most easiest pudding in the world after creme brulee. Mm. Oh, maybe I, both. I wouldn't know, I just eat them. All I know is I had creme brulee yesterday and I've got to eat them next today. <laughs> Oh, you probably have diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was uncalled for. Anyway, thanks for watching and <laughs> see you next. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> see you next time.